So a lot of people have been getting batteries installed on their house lately and a lot of electricians are like, why? What is this new battery thing? What's it all for? If you're a customer, should you get one? If you're an electrician, should you be telling people to get them? Let's break into it. All right, so putting batteries on a house is what we call an energy storage system, an ESS. There's lots of different kinds of energy storage systems with different kinds of energy, different means of, of providing backup energy. Specifically, we're talking about battery ESSs. So if your house uses utility power, right, the old school methodology is just get a generator but batteries are often a lot more economical. They are not noisy. You can't have a generator in your, <laughs> in your basement. They're just super, super loud. And with generators, you lose power anyways. The motor has to kick on and that generator has to start generating power. So if you don't want to lose power at all and you just want that uninterruptible power supply sort of a, an effect, a battery system is actually a really good thing to have. And on that note, there really is slight difference, but not much of a difference between a battery backup system, a BESS, and a UPS, an uninterruptible power supply. They're very similar things. UPSs are typically little smaller devices that you add to protect sp specific pieces of equipment. A lot of times they come with surge protection or voltage regulation. With battery systems, they don't have any of the fancy frills. They're just backup batteries where you can store some energy and then when the utility goes down, you've got some energy available to ride for a little while. Now, another really great benefit of having a battery system is that if you also have a solar system, you can recharge that battery as it depletes because anything with a battery is gonna deplete over a certain amount of time and then you're up a creek anyways and you don't have power again. So having solar or some kind of other source to provide charging means to recharge the batteries allows you to continuously cycle them, but we'll get into that in a second. So how do battery systems work? with homes. So essentially like a normal house, you're gonna have a service panel with a main breaker in it, right? We're feeding out circuits out to loads. But if you lose utility power, you lose all power. You can't turn anything on. So when we add a battery system, the first thing that we typically do is add a small sub panel and we separate, we take some of the things that are in this panel, like some uh, lighting circuits, some receptacle circuits, maybe a microwave or something so we can cook. You're, you're talking about like living minimally until power comes back on. So that's why we have a separate sub panel that we usually install for critical loads. And then we run those things out of this panel rather than this panel. And you're probably thinking, well, like how if you separate the panels and this one's getting power, how is this one getting power? So let's break into that. What we would do once we have that thing installed is we would ins install a battery and a transfer switch, both of them together. The transfer switch, um, it, it can be either automatic or manual. Automatic just means um, when it senses that utility power is gone, it automatically transfers to a different source of power. Manual, you have to actually walk up and transfer this thing, so you would still be without power if you're using a manual transfer switch. So uh, let's just say in this situation, we've got good utility power that's feeding through. Inside of here, it's connected so that utility is still providing power to this panel. That's how this panel is getting energized under normal conditions. So all of the circuits in there are still going to work. You're still going to have your switch, you know, in your normal place in your house to turn on all these lights. It's just feeding from a different panel. Then when utility power goes down, it automatically transfers to a different load. And in this case, that load is a battery. So you've got a whole bunch of energy that's stored up in this battery that can be pumped in and all of the things in this panel will now have power. Everything in this panel is dead. There's nothing you can do about it, but this panel where we set all of our critical loads to are going to be functioning. So you can still, you know, most of the time with a, a small sub panel like this, we're talking like 12 circuits. So we kind of, when I wire a place, I put a few receptacles on each floor if it's a multi-floor home some lighting, like general area lighting on multiple floors. When you have LED lighting, you can put a lot more lights on and it's not a worry. So you have to be really smart about the critical loads that you're adding and figure out which things you're gonna add. So functionally wise though, when we lose power, batteries supplying the loads. Now the added benefit of batteries is that you can hook solar panels up to them because if you think about this, as you're using all of these things, this battery is getting depleted, getting depleted, getting depleted. If you don't have solar panels, you just, your battery dies and there's no way to restore it until 
we get power back on. And then a lot of the uh, transfer switches and how these batteries work is the recharge system works through the utility. So if you wanted to add solar, you could have something that is constantly recycling through the recharge cycle. So as this thing is getting depleted, you know, say at night, you guys are like throwing parties during an outage. Which I don't know why you would do, um, but you're depleting that battery. And then when the sun comes up the next day, all these photons hit the panel, send energy, stores that energy, and it starts to recharge the battery. And you could actually live off grid like this. As long as you're responsible about what loads that you're using, you're not trying to like, you know, weld, <laughs> you know, you're, you're like being responsible with your loads. This thing will keep recharging as this thing's dumping and it will just continually operate like that. So that's the benefit of having a battery system. And when you have solar, uh, when somebody goes and knocks on your door and they're like, hey, we're gonna sell you solar. Most of the time they don't put batteries on them. It's a huge farce that's happening. They're just convincing you to put solar up because they say when you lose power, you'll have solar, you'll be okay and you can go off grid. Not if you don't have batteries. You have to have batteries as a part of that. Um, that's a topic for a later video, but this is one methodology. This is one way of doing it where you've got a separate sub panel that you install and all of this functions this way. But let's say instead of adding a sub panel somewhere, you just want the entire house to be on backup. That's the second way of doing this. So in that situation, let's say we've got a panel. Um, we need to have another disconnect. We have to have a way to cut power off of this panel. So in a situation where we wanna feed an entire panel, what we do is in the middle of it, we just splice a battery and a transfer switch in place. So now we have the main power going through the transfer switch just like it was doing before. And we have a battery and transfer switch set up in between. And when we lose utility power, we have boom, battery is the source. So we don't even need the utility power. Battery is now feeding the entire panel. And that's the second way of doing it. Now the, the challenge with this is if people are using everything in this panel, you gotta be smart about what you're using because again, these things are gonna have some kind of an overcurrent protection on them to protect the equipment. So a lot of times if you're running 100 amps through these and you got a 50 amp breaker on here, it's gonna trip all the time or you're just gonna dump these batteries in an hour. So you have to be really careful doing it this way and I would do a little bit of load shedding where I would, you know, if, if you are gonna set it up this way, just go and turn off a lot of your bigger loads. That way if you got four kids running around the house and they're just plugging stuff in and playing Xbox, they can't do some things. There's some appliances that you wouldn't wanna put on here because they're gonna draw a whole lot. So shutting a whole bunch of different breakers off and leaving a certain amount of loads that you can function minimally with would be the way to go about this. So Anchor sent a bunch of their products recently. They've got some home battery storage product lines, link in the description below if you're curious more about them. But they sent a Solix F3800 battery system and they have some expandable options that you can do. You can have like multiple of them together to add capacity to the system. There are these other batteries that you can stack on top of each other to add more to the system. But it was really cool to see like the total capacity that you get out of these things. So on the input side, they can have solar come as an input to recharge this and it gives you up to 2,400 watts of solar input and you can have up to 12,000 watts of output into the system. And since they're expandable, you can get up to 53.8 kilowatt hours of capacity. So that's actually quite a bit of capacity and just using these things, hooking drones up to them, hooking batteries, charging things, hooking a lot of things up to this, it actually showed us that there's a lot of capacity to the system. So there's three different ways that you can install one of these anchor systems. You can either put a automatic transfer switch on it with their home power panel. Um, so it's a Solix product that goes with the Solix batteries, but it does automatic transfer. So again, if you want to not have to sweat anything or worry about it, this will transfer power instantaneously without interruption. If you're like video editing or like gaming or something like that, and there's a lightning storm and you lose power, you can keep going. There's no interruption at all. You won't even notice because you got your headset on. You can't even hear the thunder, right? But you're not gonna notice a drop in power. With a generator, uh, you still have to wait for that thing to kick in. So you're always gonna lose power with a generator and have to wait for it to start to transfer power over. So the automatic transfer means with the battery systems actually is a really great thing for that. The second option is to have the manual transfer switch. So the manual just loses the automatic nature. So you still get a quiet battery system that's really eco-friendly, um, but you have to manually go turn it on if power's lost, just like if you had a manual transfer switch on a generator. It kind of works the same exact way. 
And then the third option is it's portable. So you can kind of take this thing anywhere that you want to. If you're out at a football game or you know, for your kids or like you're camping somewhere or you're out in a remote job site somewhere and you just need power, um, the, these batteries are awesome because they come with like little receptacle uh, inputs into them so that you can actually charge things um, and use it out in the field. And because it takes in solar, if you have any portable solar panels like they sent us, you could actually just set this whole array up, kick it up, hook the battery into it and it'll constantly recharge. So you kind of have like off grid power out in the field. I think it's pretty rad. Oh, and one last thing, they have a mobile app. So um, everything, every technology nowadays has an app, right? Um, this has an app too. So you can actually monitor and see what your usage is on the app, which I think is just another awesome feature to it. So that is battery energy storage systems or BESSes. Hope you guys learned something. Love you crazy people. I'll see you in the next one.